morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Global Atheist News Roundup, dateline 23rd of December 2023. This week's headlines. A political candidate beheaded a satanic temple statue and now faces charges. London's Barclay Primary School was forced to close by anti-Israel protesters. Edward Little was jailed over his Hyde Park Speaker's Corner gun attack plot. In India's holiest city, Hindus worship the nation of India. At Felixstowe, a same-sex couple received one of the Anglican Church's first blessings. In a breakthrough move, the Vatican officially okays Catholic blessings for gay couples. Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act is being challenged in court. And a Victorian council ignores concerns about a prayer ritual and Bax tradition. A former Mississippi political candidate is facing criminal charges after a bedazzled statue of Baphomet, a figure associated with the Satanic Temple, was discovered decapitated at the Iowa State Capitol. Michael Cassidy, a former US Navy pilot, told Fox News that he saw the controversy surrounding the display, which was heavily criticised by Republican politicians like Ron DeSantis, and drove to Des Moines to see it for himself. He said it hit a nerve and he went on to destroy it. How precisely did you decapitate Satan? Fox News host Jesse Waters asked Cassidy. Tore it off, pulled it apart, put him in a garbage bag, Cassidy said. This is the first time in history that Iowa's Satanic Temple chapter has been allowed to put up a display at Iowa's state capitol, alongside holiday displays from other religious groups. Members said they were disheartened after driving hours to observe the Baphomet statue which was displayed alongside electric candles, roses, and an installation of their seven core tenets, of their seven core tenets, only to see the deity beheaded and smashed on the ground. In the days following the destruction, the Satanic Temple of Iowa was able to raise thousands of donations and say that they'll continue to advocate for religious pluralism and freedom of speech. We were thrilled to be part of the Iowa State Capitol's holiday display for the first time this year. Despite experiencing the destruction and beheading of our display, we carry with us a sense of accomplishment, the group shared on Facebook. Cassidy was arrested and faces vandalism charges, which could carry a one-year prison sentence and a $2,560 fine. He's since been released and has raised $40,000 in legal fees following praise from Republican politicians and far-right pundits across the country. According to an archived version of his own campaign website, Cassidy once pushed for a 10-year prison sentence for anyone who destroys a statue in his own state of Iowa. London's Barclay Primary School was forced to close by anti-Israel protesters. The mob was angry because Barclay Primary wanted to remain apolitical. It doesn't want worldwide conflicts brought into the school. See this video. A 
A man who planned a gun attack at central London's Hyde Park has been jailed for at least 16 years. Edward Little had intended to kill Christian preacher Hatun Tash after travelling from Brighton to the capital on the 23rd of September last year. He travelled by taxi with £5,000 to buy a firearm and bullets in South London when he was stopped by police and arrested. In May, Muslim convert Little admitted preparing to commit acts of terrorism. He was sentenced in his absence after he refused to attend Friday's Old Bailey hearing. The defendant had planned to target Ms. Tash after deciding against an attack on the late Queen's funeral in Westminster, the court heard. In a te televised hearing, Mrs. Justice McGowan gave Little a life sentence with a minimum prison term of 16 years. In a separate case at Inner London Crown Court, Rhys Ford, Caleb Wenyev and Tyler King were jailed after admitting being party to a plot to sell Little a gun, although it was accepted that they did not know it was for a terror attack. Ford was jailed for 13 years and 6 months, Wenyev for 12 years and King for 10 years and 9 months. All three admitted conspiring to transfer a prohibited firearm. See this video. Right, let's start down, guys. Start down. Guys, aren't there? Right, listen, listen. That's it. Tell me, is that is that another reason for choosing that target? No, Connor. Because. <laughs> The holy city of Varanasi is a place of deep devotion where pilgrims of the ancient Hindu tradition from around the world travel to worship at the temples that fill every block of the city once dubbed Banaras by India's British rulers. But Tucked away on the historic streets is a hundred-year-old temple where there are no idols, rituals or scriptures. This temple is dedicated to the goddess of the nation, Mother India. Since Modi's 2014 election, his government has bolstered religious pride for its Hindu citizens, some of whom are in favour of a Hindu Rashtra, or nation. Slogans from the days of British rule, such as Bharat Mata Ki Jai, Hail Mother India, or Vanda Mataram, Praise the Motherland, have now come to represent an ideology that many in his constituency hold, a distinctly religious allegiance to the Mother Goddess of India, or Bharat. While many critics decry Modi's leadership for what they say is deliberate exclusion of the country's non-Hindu minorities, many residents of the holy city disagree. Now for some good news. A couple has become one of the first same-sex partnerships to receive a blessing at a Church of England service. Prayers for Catherine Bond and Jane Pierce were held at St John the Baptist Church in Felixstowe, Suffolk. Both are associated priests in the parish and celebrated their love and friendship and commitment to one another. Blessing same-sex couples was recently sanctioned by the House of Bishops. During the prayers, Canon Andrew Dotchin said the pair were continuing on a pilgrimage graced by God's blessing with you as their companion in the dark, where they can rejoice and hope in sustaining their love for all the days of their lives. 
the Vatican's doctrinal office has officially declared it possible for Catholic priests to bless same-sex unions and divorced and remarried couples, under the condition that the blessings do not send mixed messages about the Church's teachings on sacramental marriage and do not occur within a liturgical celebration. While extremely narrow in scope, the December the 18th declaration from the powerful dicastery for the doctrine of the faith may serve as the most concrete pastoral shift on the church's stance towards gay couples in the church's centuries-long history. The publication of the eight-page document Fiducia Supplicans on the pastoral meaning of blessings comes less than three months after Pope Francis had personally opened the door to such a possibility in response to five retired conservative Catholic cardinals who had written to the pontiff about whether such blessings might become possible. While the new document distinguishes between liturgical blessings and spontaneous or personal ones, it states that Catholic priests may offer blessings to gay couples or those in irregular unions, if requested as a matter of popular piety or devotion. It also states that the couples should not be required to have prior moral perfection as a precondition for obtaining the blessing. They don't have to be virgins. While the declaration paves new ground for the pastoral practices of individual priests, it explicitly forbids that such blessings take place within the context of a liturgical celebration and does not allow for them to be performed with any clothing, gestures or words that are proper to a wedding. Under the limited conditions, the new guidelines outline such blessings must be personally administered by the minister without any prepared texts or rituals developed by a National Bishops' Conference. One of the world's harshest anti-homosexuality laws is being challenged in the Ugandan courts by rights groups. The law has caused global outrage, with the World Bank halting new loans to Uganda and the US imposing visa restrictions on key officials. Anyone convicted of being involved in homosexual acts faces life imprisonment under the law which was enacted in May. Rights groups have asked judges to annul the law, arguing that it violated the right to equality and dignity. The government is defending the case in the Constitutional Court, saying the law protects traditional family values. Known as the Anti-Homosexuality Act, the law imposes the death penalty for so-called aggravated cases, which include having gay sex with someone below the age of 18, or where someone is infected with a lifelong illness such as HIV. An overwhelming majority of lawmakers voted for it in Parliament, and it came into effect after President Yoweri Museveni approved it. In August, a 20-year-old was the first to be charged with aggravated homosexuality after being accused of unlawful sexual intercourse with a 41-year-old. A rural Victorian council will continue to, to require observance of Christian worship in its meetings, despite pleas from one councillor for the local government to make its practices more inclusive and welcoming and stop giving preferential treatment to one religion. See this video. So I put it to my fellow councillors that the inclusion of the opening prayer in council meetings is inappropriate on a number of grounds. I feel that the government of a diverse community is best served by leaving religion out of its formal proceedings. I feel removal of this religious Observance practice would be the most neutral path to take going forward. As our community grows increasingly diverse, we need to constantly reflect upon our government's practices and formalities to ensure that those practices and formalities reflect 
the diversity of the community and don't pose as potential barriers for participation. So first, by reciting religious prayer, it, it mixes religion and government in a formal way. I don't think that's appropriate. I think that's an issue. Second, it gives favour to a single religion, thereby losing a neutral approach to religion. I think that's an issue. And finally, the practice is not supported by any particular legislation or regulation. The advantages of this proposal are that will create a more diverse and universally welcoming space and the proceedings for our decision-making forum here uh, will be more inviting to a broader, diverse community. And they'll do that by not demonstrating that preferential treatment of just one religion. Um, we won't be asking people or, or um, requiring people to participate in religious observance by entering this forum. And we also can be putting it upon individuals and others to take convoluted approaches to avoiding participating in those religious observance practices. The Free Thought Productions team is planning another edition of Global Atheist News on the 30th of December 2023. But we are taking a festive season break from two of our shows, Free Thought Hour and Views on the News. They will both be back on January the 6th, 2024. We hope you have a great holiday and here's some music to put you in the right spirit. You've been watching Global Atheist News. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe. was a celebration, it came but once a year, a time of rejoicing, giving gifts, goodwill and cheer, drinking and feasting in generosity, playing games and singing, oh so very joyfully, Christmas, it was Saturnalia. The party to end all parties like you have never seen with mistletoe and holly and ivy evergreen. Trees adorned with decorations, candles burning bright. Dancing and festivities all day and through the night Saturnalia, Saturnalia We wish you all a very merry Saturnalia It all began as early as 217 BC a while before Jesus and Christianity A winter solstice festival that lasted centuries A pagan Roman banquet from way back in history Saturnalia, Saturnalia No, it wasn't Christmas, it was Saturnalia, Saturnalia, Saturnalia.